Our guest today is a best-selling author, a top-ranked financial planner, and a Dave Ramsey Smart Vester Pro. He brings a coaching mindset with the heart of a teacher to financial planning and investing. Let's welcome to the show Chad Hufford. What's going on, brother? Nico, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to see what you have to say. So without further ado, what is the most valuable lesson you've learned and how did it change your life? I would say the most valuable lesson I've learned is consistency matters. It's often not the big thing that we do one day. It's the little things that we do every day that build and accumulate over time. It's a lesson I learned early on in sports, you know, drilling the basics, doing the foundational things that you know, kids wanted to, to practice the, the fancy catches or the fancy moves. And, you know, the coaches like it's blocking, it's tackling, it's, it's the, the mundane stuff. And if you do this well, you build your foundation, you'll be successful. Um, and I learned that in school. I was homeschooled in the 80s, long before it was cool. It's probably not cool now, but it certainly wasn't cool back then. And it was just, it was trusting the process and not worrying about where I was at any given day, but focusing on more the direction. But where this really came to be life transformative for me was early on in my career. And I started my financial uh, planning practice in 2007, just as the financial crisis was beginning. And what happened was another couple of years, basically the financial world melting down worldwide. You remember it. And I was having a hard time providing for my family. It was really, really difficult. And I started to even questioned my worth as a man, as a husband, as a father, and should I even be doing this? Imposter syndrome was just screaming at me, like, you you shouldn't even be here, man. Uh, other people were telling me the same thing. Like, I, had, I had a degree in biochemistry. People were like, go into medicine, you know, pursue that. And what it really came down to was trust and consistency. That I was on the right path. It was just going to take longer than I thought. And fast forward several years later, um, well, before we fast forward, let me just touch on a, a piece. Uh, an author, Nick Murray, uh, spoke a lot of wisdom into my life. And um, he really coached me in this idea of focusing on inputs, not outcomes. If you're consistent with the inputs, the outcomes take care of themselves. And what I started focusing on was not the, the rejection and the fear of failure and things like that. But the amount of people that I stood in front of and said, hey, my name is Chad Hufford. I'm a financial planner. My job is to make sure people don't run out of money or purpose in retirement. I'd love to help. Are you interested in having that conversation? A lot of people said no. Most people said no. But my focus was on consistently executing the discipline of getting in front of people and offering what I had. And fast forward several years later, I won a few national awards. This is not to pat myself on the back. Um, but I was getting ready to receive an award. And one of the one of the presenters was like, "Hey, we just want we want you to say a few words. What's something you can tell everybody?" And I said, "The only reason I'm here is because I've failed more than anybody in this room, but I stuck with the process. I stayed consistent. And you know, as a wealth coach, that's something that is is super important. Um, and I, I I'm grateful that I have that story. Um, even one of the reasons I work out the way I do is it's a physical manifestation of that idea of consistency because." We don't want to tell our clients to do anything that we're not willing to do. And we realize whether it's building a better business, building a better body, uh, building wealth, no, no one dollar makes you wealthy. No one push up makes you fit. No one business decision is going to make you successful. It's consistently adhering to the things every single day that you need to do that most people will only do occasionally. That's what separates folks. That's what creates the difference. It isn't the one big thing, it's the tiny little small things that we do each and every day that we consistently and relentlessly pursue. And I just also want to remind people too, it's not about perfection. There's no perfect script for me to, uh, to present to people. There's no perfect business plan. There's no perfect marriage. There's no perfect kids. Persistence beats perfection. And, and I just look at that as cons persistence, is just consistency under fires, consistency under pressure. So I hope that's encouraging. That's been a big lesson for me. I was blessed to have parents that taught me that from a very young age, uh, to be disciplined, to be patient, to trust 
that things were going to work out in the end as long as I stayed consistent with the inputs. And I have to thank Nick Murray. Uh, maybe I'll send this to him. Um, he's just he's a tremendous mentor and guide for me to to stay consistent, to not try to speed the process up, not try to take shortcuts. I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is they they try to find a, a quicker route to to wealth, to a successful business, to a better body, whatever it is. And it's it's about one foot in front of the other. It's being the tortoise, not the hare. And, and not trying to speed up the process, but relentlessly executing with consistency. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I've been through this a few times in my life. I'm going through something very similar to what you're going through, what you went through in 2007 as we speak right now. Mm -hmm. So I feel you. And, you know, your story reminds me of what Bruce Lee said. I don't fear a man that's practiced 10,000 kicks once. I fear the men that practice one kick 10,000 times. Yes. So it's all about consistency. You're absolutely bang on on that one. And, you know, for the guys out there that maybe they're struggling right now, maybe they're, you know, they're going through a rough patch. Maybe they started their own business. Maybe they did something out of the ordinary and everybody around them are telling them exactly what they told you what they've told me that, oh, maybe you should do something that you should do something else. You should don't do this because th there's an easier way to do it. What would you say is the one thing they could do right now? If there was one takeaway that they can, they can take from this podcast, what would you say? There's an easy way and there's a right way. And the right way is almost always the narrow road that most people are not going to go on it. And you have to look at who's giving you that criticism. And a lot of times they're the people that they're not in the arena, they're in the stands. They're not willing to do the things that you're trying to do. And it's really easy to sit on the sidelines and criticize the people that are, are willing to be different and, and not willing to accept average. Um, there, the world is full of skeptics that are, are, They're whatever you want to call them, armchair quarterbacks, Monday morning quarterbacks. They're people that are really quick to pass judgment, but really slow to act themselves. We can't listen to those people. Um, it's being true to yourself and lining up are the actions that I'm executing in line with the person I want to become and with what I want to achieve. And that you may look at that and realize they're not. There may be something to what people are saying, but I think looking at that through the lens of, Am I doing what is propelling me forward on this path? Am I serving the future version of me, the person I want to become? And if I am, if that is true, then I just need to stay patient, stay consistent, trust the process, keep executing, keep pushing forward one step at a time. The naysayers will be in the background. They'll still be chip, uh, chirping away, but you won't hear them as long as you're focused on where you're headed and why you're going there. That's why your inner circle is so, so, so crucial. You Absolutely. are the sum of the five people closest to you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, beautifully it's, it's, said, beautifully said, man. I absolutely love your message. Very well said. Um, guys, if you, if you liked what Chad talked about, all of his contact information, social websites going to be in the description below. So make sure to go follow him, make sure to go check him out. And obviously, If you like this show, you need to like, you need to share, you need to comment. And until next time.